All right, so today in the garage, this is what we got going on. I got this HP Z240, which a customer had and owned, and as you can look, um, she ain't too much to look at, but she gets the job done. Pretty much the customer complaint is, is that when they boot it up, every time they boot it up, they get this right over here. System time's invalid, real time clock power loss, and then their Windows time is always off and resetting, and this goes on, on, and on, and on, and on. So, boot it up, first thing I always do is confirm the customer complaint. Okay, we've confirmed it. So now, typically in this situation, all you really need to do is just replace the battery, right? That would be ideal, but in our case, check it out. Yeah, something broke off, maybe when they popped in a video card or anything, which is the graphics card they have, which is, uh, I forget this one, the Fire Pro W4100. Maybe when they put it in or did something, that broke, they popped it off. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna, de well, attempt to desolder whatever's left of that, and we need to find a donor. The great thing about keeping old parts, and guys, I suggest this, if you have old parts, keep them around, because you might need like a little capacitor or a thingamabobber 2000 or a battery holder 500. We can take this, or this one. I don't know which one's gonna be my donor because they're all junk boards. Desolder it, and solder it back onto there. So let's go ahead, let's find a board, let's desolder it, and let's see if we can make this work. All right, so we chose this one as our victim. So if we look at that, let's turn it around, and as we see over here, we have our two little solder points over here. So we got to desolder them, and this should hopefully pop out. But just like anything, you got to have the right tools. Now, disclaimer, guys, this is not a how-to solder video. I'm the last guy to teach you how to do it. But the whole point of this video is, is that, number one, if you have that issue that we're talking about, which can happen on any motherboard, usually you need to change the battery. Or number two, sometimes these break. I mean, we break them. I've broken them before and had to resolder them. And instead of throwing out the board, or because you're definitely not going to warranty it because it has physical damage, then what you need to do is figure out how to solder that. So that's what we're going to do. The first thing that you're going to need is your soldering gun. This one, I got it on the old Amazon for like 20 bucks. You want a solder sucker and solder whip wick. The sucker is pretty much going to be for like on the back over here to suck up the rest of that solder so it comes right out. And the wick, I just find it for bigger puddles of solder. It kind of absorbs it and whatever. You need some solder just to resolder it. And what is this one? I don't know. I found it with the kit. Uh, regular piece flux. Yeah. I usually put that on the tip. I don't know. Like I said, this is not a how-to video. Just kind of showing you guys how I would do this. So let's put this camera down. Let's desolder this. And let's see if we get this thing running. All right. So like we talked about, we got this one right over here and this one right over here that we need to loosen out. So I've done this like maybe once or twice and I ain't the best at it, but we're gonna give it a shot and why not record me doing it, right? So we got our soldering gun. It's been warmed up for like a minute. And what we're gonna do is attempt to kind of heat this up without setting the wire on fire. Okay. All right, so we got it off and probably not the most conventional method to do it, but it works. There are better ways to do it, I'm sure, but um, because this motherboard is junk, I just kind of held down on the little pins over here until it just kind of loosened up and it was able to pop right out. So I still got the pins. So now we should be able to go ahead and transfer this to our other motherboard. So let's go ahead and get that out and resolder it. Hopefully I don't mess it up. This is our patient and as you can see this is already came out so great so now what we need to do is get these two holes opened up cleared up slide this in 
make sure it pops in just the way it needs to pop and we should be golden so as you can see there is an orientation if you look on it for it right there so we kind of match the new one with that orientation we should be able to pop it in so let's turn it over to the back probably take out my memory modules because i really don't want to mess these up because you know parts Yank it out just like that. Perfect. I'm gonna use this to suck up the extra ones. Ugh, gotta juggle this. What we kind of need to do. Let's position this where it's ready to kind of line up. Quick solder to it just to kind of make sure we got a good connection. All right, it's not the prettiest soldering job, but it'll get the job done. So let's pop this back in the computer and see if it works all right so our sketchy repair kind of worked we're in the bios they also gave me that CMOS clock whatever thing so we're gonna go ahead and set the date and time reboot it and see if it worked let's turn her off all right let's make sure it's super off Ugh. okay do the whole discharge thing okay now let's go ahead and plug the power back in all right and let's see if it's gonna ask me for the date and time all right boot it right up of course I don't have the hard drive in because we're doing something else with it and this worked so what can we take away from this number one guys don't be afraid to try to fix something if it's broken yes you can make it more broken but ideally I mean you can't make it worse it's either you're gonna have to buy a new one or used one or just try to fix it in this case keep spare parts around spare parts will save you time will save you money and who knows you'll be able to learn a new skill I don't have the best soldering skills in the world honestly in my opinion soldering is a skill that needs a lot of practice and finesse and if you get real good at it you can really make some good money and do some cool mods but anyways that's another story for that but basically being able to desolder those pins solder these in i was able to save forty dollars on getting this motherboard customer would be happy with it and we could get this computer back on the road but even better news customer called they're getting ready to do an upgrade so they said keep this and just use it towards the fee of whatever uh, I would have charged and they also said that they're gonna have me do some other work for them so now I got a new HPZ 240 in there now if you remember the last one we modded it so what are we gonna do with this one I don't know I don't even know if I'm gonna make a video of anything going on for this but if you're definitely interested comment down below and let me know with it so guys thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video you can do this I can do this and it's actually not that hard If you like the video hit the like button subscribe if you're not and as always we'll see what we do next